I'm going to be honest here. This is a video topic that has been on my list for a very long time. And the reason I've avoid doing it is not because I don't think it's important, but because I think it's incredibly important and incredibly sensitive to do. And I thought maybe if I wait long enough, I can come up with the perfect person to discuss this topic with. I can come up with the perfect words to say about this topic. But the fact of the matter is that just prolonged the discussion about this, this, this question. This is possibly one of the hardest questions I have, I have ever gotten, I've ever had to consider as a pastor. Not because I don't think I can come up with an answer, but because of how sensitive it is and how horrific it is to comprehend. So with, with that in mind... I would like to discuss one of the most difficult questions I've ever considered. Do aborted babies go to hell? Let's get into it. Throughout the history of the church, many people have tried to address the question of what happens to unbaptized children when they die. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church at some point came up with the idea of limbo. It's not a biblical concept, and as far as I know, it's not a, it's not a belief that they hold to officially anymore at all. The idea being that every child who dies goes to this other place, so we don't have to endure the consequence of, uh, of believing that children who die can potentially go to hell. This is a very difficult topic to talk about because... When we think about the most innocent, again, nobody is innocent, everybody is conceived in sin, but the most innocent among us as humans, we think of children, the unborn, the, the ones who have had the least amount of time on this earth to commit sins and the least atrocious sins. I mean, the worst sins in the world are committed by adults, um, people who are capable of doing such evil. Now, in the case of, of, of children, we know that uh, well, in the, case of, in the case of everybody, in the case of humanity, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. The free gift of God is life everlasting in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the case of children, we know that children are under the curse of the law. We know this because God never gives an exemption for somebody based on age. There is no age of accountability in the Bible. There is no wait until you're 8 years old or 12 years old, and at that point your sin counts, but before that point you can get away with whatever you want. You automatically go to heaven if you die. That is not in the Bible. It's not a biblical concept. That being said, what can we say about how God regards children in the Bible? God talks about the faith of children in the Bible. He says that we should have faith as these as these infants have faith. As the word that, that's used there is for very young children. It's not, you know, youthful kind of uh, exuberance of, of teenagers who, who have faith, but it's, it is very, very young children. So we know that it is possible for very young children to have faith. Uh, we also know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, that God works miraculously through the hearing of the word. Not that a person has to just, it's, it's not intellectual assent that saves a person, but it is the miraculous creation of faith through the power of the Holy Spirit that works through the word and sacraments. Now, if a child has not yet reached the stage where they can be baptized, if they are growing up, even in the womb, in a household that is full of prayer, in a household that is full of the word of God, in a household that attends church regularly, then we can have a degree of confidence that, you know what? God, you promised that you would work through your word and the child has been exposed to the word of God. So we trust in that. So we can have confidence that as God uses the faith of children as an example, as God clearly loves children, you know, uh, let the little children come to me. You can see this uh, with, with Jesus, Jesus' interaction with children. And as faith comes by hearing and as children can hear in the womb, because of these things, we can we can have a degree of, of faith and confidence that God knows what he's doing and he knows what is best and he has not forgotten about his littlest ones. That children are cared for and loved by God. We know this in a general sense, but in terms of the specifics, we only have so much written about about God's love, about God's interaction. What about, what about, what about? questions. Sometimes we can answer those. Sometimes we can't answer these questions. So in the case of unborn children, we have certain things that, that can give us a degree of confidence and a, de and a degree of hope for those children who die in a Christian family. That being said, there are also things that are said in the Bible. Again, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. We know that in sin did my mother conceive me. We know that children have sinned, that 
that there is sin from the moment of conception, not from the moment of, of eight years old or age of accountability, but from the moment of conception. So what about those children who are, who are killed in the sin of abortion in families that are not Christian, in families that are not praying, in families that are not exposing the children to the word of God? Do those children go to hell? If you haven't thought about this question before, if you've ever thought about the topic of abortion, pro-choice versus pro-life, and you've thought about, well, you know, the, the gruesome nature of the physical, the physical nature of, of, of abortion, or you think about, you know, the, the, the freedom of the mother or anything like this, but you have never once considered the spiritual reality of what could possibly, what could even potentially happen to a child who dies without exposure to God's word before they're even born, then please Please consider this, because if it is even a possibility that children who die in abortion are going to hell, that even some of the children who die in abortion are going to hell, then this, this, this slaughter of innocence has become infinitely worse, infinite, infinitely more horrific than, and I, I, I hesitate to say it like this, than just the physical slaughter and murder of children. If that's not bad enough, the fact that some of these children are, as a result of being deprived access to God's word and being put to death early, if the consequences, even sometimes, of even half the time of abortion, is that children end up in hell, how much more important of an issue is this? Is this pro-life issue to protect the human life at, at the bare minimum to, to the point of birth, at the, the bare minimum to the point when they can be exposed to the word of God or around others who might pray with them or pray for them. Or... Do aborted babies go to hell? Ask, say that, say that question out loud. Do aborted babies go to hell? Because if the answer is even potentially yes, then how much more horrific is the sin of abortion. How much more horrific is it that not just our children being put to death, but children are being put in hell as a result? This is terrifying. This should terrify you. This should not make you comfortable at all. This is not a flippant issue of, well, it's just about choice and freedom. No, this is heaven and hell. This is babies going to hell. How much worse could it possibly be? So with these things that, that, that I've already discussed, we know, we know a degree of the love of God and we, and we can trust in God. We know that God values children. And with all of these things that we can have some confidence, but at the same time, that even slightest possibility, and I don't think it's a slight possibility, I think it's a significant possibility, that there are eternal consequences for children who are, who are put to death before they can have exposure to the word of God. Then this needs to be an issue that's important to you. This can't just be a well... I'm not a woman, I don't care. Well, you were a child at some point, right? This isn't just an issue this, uh, about the woman. This is an issue now about the children and the eternal souls of children. Women who have abortions may be forgiven. Jesus died on the cross for women and doctors who perform abortions. There is forgiveness of sins for those who repent of having abortions. But if somebody is put to life, put to death, before they were even born, how much chance were they even given? Their lives were cut short before they had that before they had that 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 interaction to 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 lead up to repentance for their sin. That's 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 horrific. Do aborted babies go to hell? I think so. I don't think all of them do. I think that there are that there are certainly there are certainly unborn babies who have faith. Absolutely. But I think that some degree, some amount of babies who are killed in abortion go to hell. And if 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 you have not opposed abortion as a Christian, even so far for the fact of the murder, the physical murder of children then you must oppose abortion for the possible consequence of the eternal damnation of children. This is not an issue where you as a Christian are allowed to be neutral. 
This is not an issue where you as a Christian are allowed to say, well, I support choice, but I would prefer that they don't. This is an issue where as a Christian who not only values human life, but values people going to heaven, you must be pro-life. There is no other option. I, I'm sorry if this video hurt to hear. But if you have never asked this question before, if you have never fully considered the implications of abortion to the point of spiritual, spiritual damnation, then stop and think for a moment. Say out loud this question. Do aborted babies go to hell? And if the answer is even potentially yes, even potentially yes, even potentially yes, some of them sometimes, then this absolutely should make up your mind on the issue as a Christian. <sighs> to those mothers, to those mothers who, who have had abortions, who have supported abortions, there is forgiveness of sins in the blood of Christ. As painful as it is to think about the implications of the sin and the consequences of the sin, do not despair. Jesus died on the cross for you, knowing everything that would happen. He died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Repent and be forgiven and then go out and protect the lives of the unborn as best as you can. God bless you. Take care.